What's up you guys? In this video, I'm gonna be completely overhauling the AC system on my Miata. So the video I'm about to show you, I've actually made this last year. And since summertime is here, I thought I might as well post it. So that way you guys could get a chance to fix your Miata and have your AC blowing nice and cold. So let's go ahead and get that started. So I went ahead and already took the dash out. I'm gonna be replacing this with the new one that I got. The new one I got is out of an NB Miata. And the reason why I got that one is because it has an aluminum heater core where the pipes could disconnect. So that way I don't have to take the dash out in order to change the heater core. Let me show you that new unit. So here's the replacement right here. Again, this is out of an NB Miata. I went ahead and refoamed everything, all the flaps inside. I had to take this whole thing apart and put new foam on everything and even the foam on the outside and get it all cleaned up. There's a video out there that shows how to take this apart and how to refoam everything. It's a really good video. I suggest if you guys are interested in refoaming this thing, you watch that video and I'll put it somewhere here or down in the description. Now, of course, after the dash is out to remove this unit, you're gonna have to take this nut out here, right there and right there. And after that, you're gonna go in the engine bay and undo the heater hose clamps. And of course, before we take those hose clamps out, we have to drain the coolant from the bottom of the radiator. After we get those hoses out, we can now pull out that vent box. So as you pull this out, make sure to keep these pipes somewhat level or upright like this. That way none of the coolant falls out because there is gonna be coolant in here. Now in its place, I'm gonna put this box in. This is probably a good idea. If your guys' grommets look like this, probably should get new ones. Mine completely crumbled apart. I uh, highly recommend getting new ones to seal off the engine bay because a lot of the heat comes out of this exhaust right here and will go straight into your cabin. Now that I got this installed, I'm gonna go ahead and start taking this out and checking the inside of it, see how dirty it is. And the inside of this, of course, is full of freaking crap. There's a bunch of leaves and little twigs in here. So as I was blowing this out, I realized there's a giant hole right here and I have no idea how that got there. So I have a spare one that I decided to swap out. Here it is right here. I also put new foam here, kind of like how I did to this part right here. Just did the exact same thing, added some foam on both sides and it's cleaned up, ready to be installed. And I'm gonna go to the hardware store and probably get some screen material to put on top of here because this is the intake for the outside air that goes into the cabin. And what happens is that a lot of the crap that's from outside ends up in here. So like bugs, twigs and whatnot. As soon as you open this flap, it all falls into the fan and goes through the whole system. All right, I went ahead and put some mesh on and I also put some new foam. Put the foam on the best as I could. It'll seal up just fine once it's installed. Now I have the blower motor assembly installed. I think I'm ready to put the dash in because I don't need the dash out in order to put the AC parts in. So I was putting the dash back in because this is my daily driver. But of course, if you guys have all your parts ready to install it first and then install your dash. All right, so next day I got the dash fully installed. I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the evaporator box and get that all cleaned up and put together. All right, here's my evaporator core right here. I didn't film me cleaning the box out, but I'll include some pictures here. This thing was absolutely filthy. It is kind of disturbing to know that anytime you turn on your fan that all that air is blowing past all that crap. So I went ahead and cleaned up that box and now we're here. I'm gonna be replacing this. This is the expansion valve and it is always recommended to replace this. 
I know that if you guys are going as far as to take out the dash and taking out this entire unit, might as well replace the whole thing. I don't think I need to replace this because it didn't show any signs of leaking and it came out of a working AC system. So to remove this, we're gonna be removing this part right here. This is a 14 millimeter. We're gonna be removing this part right here. This is a 19 millimeter. And this one, I believe, is a 24 millimeter. I don't have a wrench big enough, so I'm gonna use an adjustable wrench. And then after that, we're gonna undo this tape right here and take out this thing. Now be careful when removing all these lines. It is very easy to bend these lines and possibly break and crack these. So the way I did this was, of course, I used my adjustable wrench to break this nut loose. And to hold this still, I used my 14 millimeter and stuck it right here. And that gives me enough support to make sure I don't bend any of these lines. And this part of the expansion valve right here, you can see it's a hex shape, so you could put your wrench on it. Same thing right here, there's a hex part that you use to support this tubing. Okay, so I finally got all of these broken loose and I got this stuff off. I think this stuff is pipe wrap. I'm not 100% sure, but now I'm gonna use a screwdriver to take this screw out. I'm gonna take this part out and we should be able to remove this entire expansion valve. Also, make sure to save all these O-rings. We're gonna replace these O-rings, but we need to keep the old ones. That way we could grab the correct size new O-rings. Here's the old expansion valve. Now, before I put the new one in, I'm gonna flush out this entire core. So now I'm gonna start flushing out this core. I'm gonna be using this flush system right here. I got this off of Amazon, but of course you guys could use the aerosol can that you get from the auto store. Since I'll be doing more AC services, I decided to invest in one of these. It's a good idea to have one of these. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this right here and start flushing it. Now this thing is fully clean. I'm gonna go ahead and install this expansion valve. And before I do that, I need to match up some O-rings. This is the O-ring for this part right here. So get yourself an O-ring kit and match those O-rings. You put them down on the table just to see them better. So now that I got my matching O-ring, I'm gonna go ahead and lube it with some of PAG 100, as this is what the system calls for. Make sure to unroll this. Try not to kink these tubes. Thankfully, this part comes with the O-ring here. This O-ring's a lot smaller than what usually comes in the kits, so this one is included. Okay, for this, I just used some pipe wrap or insulation tape I hope this is the right stuff to use. I'm sure that this probe right here needs to get the most accurate temperature off this pipe. So at least sealing this up should help that. Okay, now I got the rest of this put together. Now I'm gonna start working on the condenser. All these parts that I got, I got off of rockauto.com. The brand for all these parts are UAC. For the receiver dryer, there's a part of it that says in, and that's gonna be facing towards the pipe of the condenser. It is highly recommended to install the receiver dryer on the condenser before installing it on the car because it is really difficult to install this on the car. It is a very good idea to replace the condenser and the receiver dryer anytime you work on an AC system that has been open to the elements. The receiver dryer is also pressurized out of the box, so keep in mind when you're taking off the caps that they'll let out some air. So install this along with the outlet tubing bolt that tube down to the condenser and then now the whole unit should be ready to be installed in the car as one. For all the AC parts, I taped the ends of the pipes with some electrical tape to prevent any debris from getting in as I'm installing those parts. Once those parts are installed, I remove the tape. Okay, the box is fully installed. If you guys are wondering how to take this out in the first place, 
There are two mounting nuts. There's one at the very top right there. And then there's one at the bottom right here. And those are out. There are two clamps that clamp both sides of this box. One to the blower motor and one to the vent box. And after you get those off, you wanna undo these two wires. Make sure you have a picture of these wires. That way you know which one goes where. And lastly, at the bottom, there's a tube. That's your drain that you need to disconnect. And of course, make sure before you pull this out that the two AC lines in the back are disconnected. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this bottom bracket on for the glove box and then install the glove box and then work on installing the condenser. So my plan for this is to hook one corner of the condenser on this stud right here and then have a bolt ready and hold up the other side and screw it in and that way it it stays up and I could bolt the rest of these bolts down. Okay, now the condenser is fully installed and secured. I'm gonna go ahead and start installing the hoses. Okay, now most of these lines are installed and bolted down. So you can see from there, there's one bolt that goes there. And then there's one bolt on the side over here. And then down here as well, there's that new bolt right there. Now for the electrical portion, I went ahead and connected this relay. This is the AC relay. This controls the fan and other parts. And here, this connector's for the refrigerant switch, which is located right there. And of course, this last wire goes to this additional fan. And all that's left is the rubber lines and then the AC compressor. And I'm also gonna install the retrofit kit for the lines. Now here are the adapters right here. I got it at my local Napa. The low side is a 90 degree elbow and then the high side is a straight. Here's the low side right here, and the high side right here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and install these on the lines. Before we install these adapters, we have to remove the straighter valves that are inside of these lines. You're gonna need a tool like this. This is a tire straighter valve removal tool. You get this at the auto store. It is much easier to remove these with the lines out of the vehicle. So before you guys install these lines, remove that straighter valve. That way you guys don't have to try to fiddle with it. With the valve out, we're gonna put a little bit of blue thread locker on here. Not a lot, just a teeny tiny bit. There we go, that's all we're gonna need. And then we're gonna go ahead and thread on this fitting. And these don't have to be super tight, just snug enough where this won't come loose. And this is a size 14. Same thing for the high side, just a little bit of blue Loctite. Okay, now both of these fittings are installed. I'm gonna go ahead and start removing all this ducting and install the AC compressor. I'm gonna loosen this screw right here and this screw right here, and this part should come out. I'm gonna remove this vent tube right here, undo this clamp right here, pull this hose out, and undo this screw. 
So there's a pivot bolt that's behind this pulley. We're gonna have to bump the motor over just a little bit. So that way we could get the hole right around this area so we could loosen this bolt. Now we're gonna break this bolt and nut loose right here. We're gonna break this bolt loose right here. You may have to use a 14 millimeter wrench to hold this nut right here. Also, we're gonna have to break this bolt loose. Once you get that loose, you can just push down on the bracket right here, which pushes down on the power stream pump, and then you should be able to remove this belt. Now we are ready to install the AC compressor. Okay, now I got the AC compressor fully installed. I did have to remove these lines. I thought I could leave the lines on and put the compressor in, but it's just really difficult. So I took the lines off the compressor, put the compressor in by itself first, and then bolted the lines on. And I also went ahead and attached the lines to their factory mounting points. So that way there's no movement and these things are not hanging too low. And that's it. Now the whole system is completely sealed with new O-rings and put together. So now I'm gonna throw a belt on here, tension it up, put everything back together. Speaking of belts, this is the one I had before. This is just for the pulley and the power steering. This will not be big enough for the AC compressor. This is the belt I'm gonna use for everything. It is slightly bigger than the old one. So this is gonna fit with the AC compressor, power steering pump, and pulley all together. I almost forgot to connect that AC wire. So it's the wire that comes out of the compressor. The mounting point is right here on the, the power steering reservoir. And then the connector is this one right here. It's got a black wire with a red stripe. So unfortunately I had a failure with this tool. I was pulling a vacuum out of the system. After that, I started adding refrigerant. And when the AC compressor kicked on, the high pressure side started building up pressure and the fitting right here started leaking really bad and spraying refrigerant and oil out. So instead I went to my local mechanic shop and had them charge up the AC system. Also this system requires 8.75 ounces of PAG 100 oil. I put four ounces in the AC compressor. I was turning the pulley as I was adding it and the rest of it I had the mechanic install as they were charging up the lines with refrigerant. This system calls for 24 ounces of R134A refrigerant. And finally the AC system is now charged up as you can see. When I turn the fan on and push the AC button, the air inside is nice and cold all right that's gonna wrap it up for this video hope you guys enjoyed and hope this helps a lot of you guys if you guys have any comments feel free to leave them down below I'll see you guys in the next one